What is the solution set of the absolute value of the x squared minus 4 is less than 3? And as in previous absolute value problems, we have to separate this into two cases. The first case where the expression x squared minus 4 is a positive number, so the absolute value bars don't affect it. And the second case where the expression x squared minus 4 evaluates to a negative number, and then the absolute value bars will flip it. So the first case, x squared minus 4, the positive version is less than 3. In the second case, where it's the negative of x squared minus 4, and that's less than 3. The only tricky part with this problem is that we have an x squared here. But we'll come to this point once we solve each of these two cases. So looking at case 1, what we can do is add 4 to each side so that we have x squared is less than 7, and I'll leave it here for a moment. And in case 2, we'll multiply each side by negative 1 so that we have x squared minus 4 is greater than negative 3 since multiplying by a negative number and in any quality will flip the sign. Now we can add 4 to each side so that we have x squared is greater than 1. And now usually when we have a square, we would just take the square root of each side and we get plus or minus the square root of 7. But since this is an inequality, we can't do that here. So what we have to realize is that the square root of x squared is really just equal to the absolute value of x. And when we write plus or minus the square root of something, we're really just incorporating this idea without expressing it explicitly. So we can rewrite this as the absolute value of x is less than the square root of 7. And in this case, we have the absolute value of x is greater than the square root of 1, which is just 1. So now, since we have an absolute value again, we can again split this into two separate cases. The first case where we have the positive x is less than the square root of 7. And the second case where we have the negative x is less than the square root of 7. And we'll do the same thing over here. Though in here I'll denote it cases 3 and 4. So we have the positive x is greater than 1. And case 4 would be the negative x is greater than 1. And now all we have to do is get rid of these negatives here. So if we, in case 2, multiply each side by negative 1, we have x is bigger than negative square root of 7. And in case 4, multiplying by negative 1, we get x is less than negative 1. So let's first combine cases 1 and 2, put x in the middle, since we know it's bigger than negative the square root of 7, and it's smaller than the square root of 7. And we can combine this with cases 3 and 4 to get our final answer. So from 3, we know that x has to be bigger than 1. Or from case 4, we know that x has to be smaller than negative 1. And one way to look at this more clearly is that we can graph it on a number line. And the square root of 7 is about 2.65. So we know that from cases 3 and 4, x has to be bigger than 1. So I'll put an open parentheses. And we know that x has to be less than negative 1. So I'll put that there. And then we also know that x is bigger than the square root of negative 7. So that would be right here about. And we know that it's also less than the square root of 7, which we can put about right here. So our solution will be anywhere in this range or anywhere in this range. And there are a couple different ways we can write this solution. So we can say that our solution is from minus the square root of 7 to negative 1 and we'll put open parentheses and then a union. And from 1 to the square root of 7 is also a solution. Or we could write it using a different set notation. We can say that x is the solution set such that 
x is bigger than minus the square root of 7 and less than minus 1, or x is bigger than 1 and less than the square root of 7. And then we close our set. So either of these solutions would be the correct answer.